The bell is sounding in the foyer of our musical comedy theatre. In a moment, the conductor will take his place in the orchestral well. The programme girls make flurried last-minute sales. Cigarettes are hastily thrown into the sandboxes. The Argerettes shuttle to and fro as a crowded audience settles down for an evening's entertainment. For a performance of a musical play in two acts, The Orchid, with music by Ivan Carroll and Lionel Moncton. When the curtain rises, a riot of colour greets the eye. The Orchid House of the Candace of Warwick's Horticultural College for Ladies. This is a unique institution and explained to music by a very orchidaceous chorus of students. Here they come, can't you hear? On the pumpkins marching, see the warden now appear with the pupils marching. Here they come, can't you hear? Here they come, on parade, just like some old brigade, dark and short, fair and tall, highly horticultural, in complete uniform, which is neat, also warm. is one mass of gorgeous blooms and tropical luxuriance, having been arranged for an exhibition, judging and prize giving, in which two very distinguished guests will participate, Countess Anne Struther and Mr. Aubrey Chesterton, Minister of Commerce. The hope is shared by these two that Lady Violet, daughter of the Countess and student at the college, will marry the Honourable Guy Scrimmager, Mr. Chesterton's nephew. But Guy loves Josephine Zachary, one of the pupil teachers, and Lady Violet has given her heart into the keeping of a penniless medico, Dr. Ronald Fawcett. The two young couples plan to be married in secret by the village registrar, with Meekin, the college gardener, as witness. And here they are now, waiting anxiously for the coast to clear. For a stylish and up-to-date wedding, every well-to-do girl is inclined. It's her dearest delight to be married in white with a bevy of beauty behind. But if relatives are rough, one is dreading. Such proceedings, of course, are absurd. It is not very far to the gay registrar. And remember that mum is the word. 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 Oh, Mr. Registrar, what a very obliging man you are. Couples come from near and far to save them a lot of fuss. Oh, well, a particular love and a family row we always bow. So, Mr. Registrar, you are the man for us. Now, when happy young couples go flocking to his office in county or town, you have got to declare certain things you're aware and the registrar drops them all down. And then you sign with a pen that is shocking and before you have time to say knife. In a grim sort of way, he will murmur, good day, and you're legally married for life. Husband and wife. Husband and wife. Husband and wife. Husband and wife. Oh, Mr. Registrar, what a very obliging man you are. Come from near and far, you say them a lot of us. Oh, well, not for love, but a family row, we always bow. So, Mr. Registrar, you are the man for us. Then away they fly. No one notices their departure, for a fine old plot is brewing around a certain wager which Mr. Chesterton, himself a fanatical horticulturist, is hoping to settle with Monsieur Deauville, the French foreign minister. Deauville has an orchid, unique of its kind, but has promised Chesterton that if he can produce one to equal it, he will give the Englishman 8,000 Suez Canal shares. Meantime, the French minister has sent an envoy to call on Chesterton, and a servant enters and announces, The Comte Raoul de Cassigna. Why, everyone gasps, that's de Cassigna of the Quai d'Orsay, the celebrated duelist who'll cross swords with his own shadow. Monsieur Chesterton, he says in a rare old musical comedy accent, I bring for you the express salutation of the French foreign minister. Within 48 hours, unless you can produce the orchid rare, you, the wager, have lost. 
Hold your horses, says Chesterton, spurning strict diplomatic parlance. My orchid hunter Zachary arrives this day from Peru with the orchid. Tell that to Monsieur Deauville. Diable, de Cassinia mutters to his escorts. That orchid must never get to France. Come along, we have work to do. Monsieur, mesdames, au revoir. An orchid threatens the sacred foundations of the Hong Kong Cordial. But meantime, the young lovers have returned from the village. The Lady Violet and Ronald, Josephine, Zachary, and the Honourable Guy joined in the bonds of matrimony and to prove that they've brought with them their marriage lines. Oh, marriage lines, oh, marriage lines, the magic in those simple signs can make a life a heaven. Can make a life a heaven. How oh, dear to bridegroom and to bride that cost be duly certified that cost for two and seven. That cost for two and seven. We're married now, though not a vow was said in stately minster. And you're no more a bachelor, and I no more a spinster. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Alas and alack, Meekin the gardener, who went along as witness, has given their names incorrectly to the registrar, and the marriage licenses show that Lady Vi has married the Honourable Guy, and Josephine, Dr. Ronald Fawcett, instead of vice versa. To complicate matters further, Meekin, through a matrimonial column, has arranged to wed a certain Caroline Vokins, and just as he arrives from the two weddings, the lady turns up anxious for poor old Meekin to attend a third. But, in his letter, he had given himself the aristocratic name of Rudolf Vandeleur and enclosed a photo of himself wearing a wig of flaxen curls and flowing moustache. Caroline insists in being taken to Vandeleur. Meekin makes excuses, tries to put her off. But you'll like him, miss, he says. He's such a poetical fellow. Ah, that's for me, says Caroline. A man with poetry in him. It's one of my fancies. Turtle dove coos in the nest. Coo -coo. And oh, I am longing to meet with my fate where photo lies hid in my breast. Coo -coo. Ah, will he be tender and loving and sweet to one so unworthy as me? And fondle me much as I sit at his feet or sometimes perhaps on his knee. Sometimes perhaps on his knee. Sunbeams are wooing with tender caress The blossoms that aren't in the shade, the, shade. the dragonfly with extravagant dress Dreams passing a sweet southern day There's love in your heart and there's love in the breeze There's love mid the flowers that bloom There's love neath the shade of the whispering trees Oh, love takes up far too much room Yes, love takes up far too much room uh -huh. Uh -huh. Love is a problem It is Marriage is gay Right there, boy You wake at dawn mm -hmm. Every morn When baby wants to play I'm coming up on the plan Life can be happy Now let's face the facts We all have to 
to run, the money we earn will go to the income tax. The stage is now cleared for some sinister plotting and moustache twirling by de Cassigna and his seconds, Fortinbra and Morignac. They enter stealthily, agitato. Nom d'un ching, hisses Cassinia. This orchid, if he gets to Paris in Deauville, I am in the mess. But I have sent the wire to Monsieur Deauville. Chesterton, I've found orchid in Peru. Fear nothing, it shall never reach France. But the Cassinia does not notice the entrance of Mademoiselle Thierry Rombert. And who is Thierry Rombert? Thierry Rombert is a spy. Come on, vous portez-vous, she says in impeccable French, the Cassinia and the party. But the remainder of the conversation is conducted in broken English. Three true Parisians conversing in quaint English accents. Ah, musical comedy, so true to life. Zeely confides to her compatriots that she has stolen the orchid from Mr. Zachary. I put my arms around his neck, take out the orchid, put back the key, and Zachary know nothing. Ha! Ah. But at this moment, Zachary makes his entrance, and while the plot is dispersed, he greets the young ladies of the Horticultural College and the distinguished guests with the tale of his adventures. I travel far where panthers are that jump on you and catch you, and snakes that twist about your wrist and kill you if they scratch you. I've run for miles from crocodiles that came with jaws extended, but I have brought the flower I sought, the orchid rare and splendid. In the wild of far Peru. It was there the orchid grew Well, the vampire bats flew Through the vapors of blue In the woods of far Peru In the woods of far Peru It was there the orchid grew Well, the vampire bats flew Through the vapors of blue In the woods of far Peru With poison swords by day and night attack me. At dawn and the dark Peruvian book, I heard as bloodhounds track me. I climbed for weeks the icy peaks and reached the top of Victor. And lastly, I was swallowed by a monstrous bow constrictor. room inside for two, but my trowel I drew, and I dug my way through to the light of far Peru. Resuming the story, Zachary, after discovering that Zeely has stolen his orchid, learns that Meekin, the gardener, has a bulb of his own, infinitely more rare and valuable than even the French minister's. But, not aware of its value, he sells it to the wily Zachary for five pounds, and Zachary presents it to Mr. Chesterton. Mr. Chesterton dispatches his nephew Guy to Nice to deliver the bulb to Deauville, and when he sees the license for the marriage of his nephew and Lady Violet, incorrect though it is, he sends them together with orders to regard it as their honeymoon trip. 
But being musical comedy, nobody has time to explain anything to anybody. And with Meekin waking up to the fact that he has been cheated of his bulb and utter confusion everywhere, the curtain comes down. The scene now represents the square at Nice at the time of the carnival. All the characters we met in Act One in the Horticultural College have been transplanted bodily to Nice, including the two young couples who have not yet been able to explain to their guardians that the names shown on their marriage certificates are incorrect. Lady Violet, who has travelled from England as the wife of the Honourable Guy, instead of a guy named Ronald, professes to be broken-hearted at the enforced separation, but still manages to keep up with a very fast set. And when invited to a champagne dinner by four chorus girls dressed, or, or rather undressed, as bacantes, replies blithely, Dinner? I would like to very much, but I don't know what little Mary would say. There's a certain little lady who's already known to fame as little Mary. As little Mary. Though she may not be romantic, yet it's such a pretty name, is Little Mary. Is Little Mary. Now I want you all to know her when I mention her again. But exactly who she is, it isn't easy to explain. Let me merely say that baby often has a tiny pain. In Little Mary In Little Mary Mary, Mary Dainty Little Mary She's a people but a fascinating fairy So if baby boy should cry And you want to find out Little Mary, she's a fickle but a fascinating fairy. So if baby boy should cry, and you want to find out why, please inquire of little Mary. Mama is very delicate, as anyone can see, because of Mary. Of little Mary. And it's not her fault she's given up her coffee and her tea. It's little Mary. It's little Mary. When we came across the other day, the sun was nice and hot. And I quite enjoyed the journey, though the steamer rolled a lot. But Mama lay down and murmured, Oh, I wish I hadn't got a little Mary. A little Mary. Mary, Mary, dainty little Mary. She's a fickle but a fascinating fairy. When you're crossing all the channel, you must wrap her up in flannel. Oh, take care of little Mary. Mary, Mary, dainty little Mary. She's a fickle but a fascinating fairy. When you're crossing all the channel, you must wrap her up in while the pursuit of the orchid continues at a feverish bat. Now de Gassigna has it. Now Zeely. Meekin gets hold of it and gives it to his Caroline, who, with splendid presence of mind, plants it in her hat, which is such a riot of ribbon, cherries, poppies and corn and ospreys as to deceive the most eagle-eyed sleuth. In the midst of the alarms and excursions, Lady Violet is reunited with her beloved Ronald. 
and finds time to tell him in broad daylight that hers is a love that needs no moon and sings, I don't want the dark. Lovers are a foolish crew As you may perhaps remark You will meet with scores Sitting out of doors Nearly always after dark Why should people bill and coo Just because the sun has I believe, oh, of dewy, but it makes the grass so wet. So you see, that wouldn't suit me. I don't want the dark to tell you that I love you. I don't want the stars. I want the great big sun to be shining up above you on a summer afternoon, 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 on a summer afternoon. I don't want the dark to tell you that I love you. I don't want the stars or the moon. original production at the Gaiety 40 years ago, Mr. George Grossmith Jr. was such a very popular star that an additional musical number had to be provided for him. So Monkton and Carol wrote a topical little ditty, Bedelia. <laughs> There's a charming little lady who's a patron of the play. She goes to the theatres every night and every matinee. Her name it is Bedelia and I wish she were my own. But her eyes are always on the baritone. Oh, Bedelia, can't you leave the man alone? Bedelia, I'm going to steal you. Bedelia, you are a pet. I'll be your Nelson Eddy if you'll be my sweet Jeanette. Say something sweet, Bedelia. Your voice I want to hear. Oh, Bedelia, Elia, Elia, I've made up my mind to steal you, steal you, steal you, Bedelia, dear. She declares that Douglas Fairbanks is the only Romeo. She's in love with Gary Cooper. That's a little fact I know. Of his manly head and shoulders, he sent her a photograph. And she's now gone out to buy the other half. But she says his Hamlet never made her laugh. Oh, Bedelia, I'm going to steal you. Bedelia, you I adore I'll be your old Bing Crosby If you'll be my dinosaur Be kind to me, Bedelia I've got a pain just here Oh, Bedelia, eat ya, eat ya I've made up my mind to steal you, steal you, steal ya Bedelia, dear Bedelia I'm going to steal ya, but with me ya, you are my dear. I'll be your Walter Pigeon, if you'll be my charming Greer. Oh, you, my 
my sweet Bedelia. I've waited half a year. Oh, Bedelia, Ilia, Ilia, I've made up my mind to steal you, steal you, steal you, Bedelia, dear. But now the ladies and gentlemen of the chorus, variously attired in a medley of costumes, arrive for the culminating frivolity of the carnival, the Bal Blanco or White Ball. And the big moment of the Bal Blanco is the settlement of the wager. A few minutes before midnight, Deauville and his entourage enters to claim his wager from that foolhardy anglais, Monsieur Chesterton. Zeely is there. The Cassinia is there. Zachary, Meekin, the young lovers, everybody. But no orchid. It looks as though the British minister will have to pay the forfeit when Meekin arrives with Caroline's hat. He races forward, presses the orchid into the clammy palm of Chesterton, who, in turn, presents it to Monsieur Deauville, just as the clock strikes twelve. So Britannia rules the orchids, and everything ends happily for everybody. The Countess, Anne Struther, and Chesterton bless the union of Lady Vi and Ronald the penniless medico. And for sheer joy, Lady Vi sings, Come Along With Me. When I was extremely small, only three or four, I did nothing wrong at all for a week or more. Auntie brought my cloak and hood, brushed my hair out knee, saying, You have been so good. You shall have a treat. I will go with you to the zoo, zoo, zoo. Come along with me to the zoo, dear. Elephants we'll see. Great big bears and tigers. We will have some tea. Tea for two, dear. You've been a good little girl, so come along with me. In a perfect world at my first big dance One young man whose eyes were dark Looked extremely nice And I meet him in the park Only once or twice But I turned so red When he said, said, said Come along with me Will you not be Merry me will be Then go hunting Moving Italy We'll see comes down on a great quantity of streamers, balloons, and confetti released from the flies. A last glittering tableau. In the crowded auditorium, the general exodus begins, and another night ends in our musical comedy theater. 